You're watching The Early Bird. Good morning, Farmington. Welcome to the first installment of The Early Bird. Today is Friday, January 22nd, 2021. Here are your morning announcements. Students, before we jump into the news, we would like to ask you to please do your part in keeping us safe at school. As you know, COVID cases are on the rise, so we need to do our diligence in ensuring that we stay socially distanced from others, wear a mask, and wash and sanitize your hands often. There are a lot of benefits to us being on site for learning, so let's do our part and keep it away. Today for lunch, we'll be having hamburger on a bun, ham and cheese croissant, french fries, romaine salad, fruit, fruit juice, and milk or banana pudding cup. Fellowship of Christian Athletes will, move, will meet every Friday morning at 7.30 in Ms. Selby's room, D211. Any upcoming junior or senior who has a job should consider taking Ms. Mrs. Skate's internship class, internship class next year. For more information, grab a packet from outside of room D101. If you have questions, ask Mrs. Skate or stop in. Teachers, if you have any other announcements that you would like added, please contact or email Mr. Dean or fill out the Google form that was sent out via email. Here at Farmington High School, there are many opportunities available concerning career paths. Everything from agriculture to drama is offered. Our own Ashley Clark speaker is going to give you a look into one of those options, specifically broadcast journalism, journalism by showing you how the morning news is made every morning. Good morning, Farmington Cardinals. Today is Wednesday, December 9th. My name is Trey Warner, and this is your morning news. The morning news are daily videos informing people of events going on within the school. Have you ever wondered how it works? <laughs> the morning news always starts with the setting up process. Turning on the main lights that hang overhead and the supporting lights that stand on the ground. Both the microphone for the camera and the person on camera. The computer along with the teleprompter and the camera. That leaves you ready to record. Then recording starts with the script being read off a mirror on the camera. There will be mess ups along the way as that is just part of the recording process. After recording, it is time to complete the editing process on Premiere Pro. This process can be a long one depending on the length of that morning news and it looks harder than it actually is. Before anyone is just thrown into editing the news, they take a few weeks to learn the process from not only the teacher but trial and error on their own. Once the news is fully edited, it is time to export the completed video for the school to watch. The news may seem complicated now, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find that it isn't very hard to begin with. Thanks, Ashley. Continuing on with specialized classes, our own Angela Clampett has another look into one of these types of classes, East. A class to give all learners the opportunity to tell you what it's like to be in East. East is a class to give all learners the opportunity to have relevant, life-changing, and educational experiences. When being in East, you get to work with different technology. You can work on computers depending on your project. There are also 3D printers, VR headsets and equipment, drones, cameras, 360 cameras, video cameras, and lots more. You have access to use any in your project. Your project can be anything from building something, making a video, working with your school, and getting involved in the community. There are many opportunities in East. You can gain experience. Being in East helps you become your own innovative self. Thanks, Angela. And now here's a look at Farmington's four-day weekend forecast with Marcus Clevenger in the Weather Farm Cards Weather Center. Thanks, Cooper. Good morning, Farmington. Here's a look at our weather for the next four days. Today will be partly cloudy with a high of 54 and an overnight low of 30, and there will be an 8% chance of rain. Saturday will be sunny and with a high of 50 and an overnight low of 39. There will only be a 6% chance of rain. Sunday and Monday, there will be a little more wet. Sunday will be partly cloudy with a high of 59, overnight low of 45, and there will be a 52% chance of rain. Monday, we will have a 76% chance of rain with a high of 55 and an overnight low of 32. That is our next four days of weather from the Farm Cards Weather Center. Back to you, Cooper. Thanks, Marcus. Turning our attention to sports, here's Ashley Cloud Speaker in the Card Center with the latest and greatest in sports. Thanks, Cooper. The Farmington basketball teams will be back in action Tuesday night when they travel to Gentry to take on the Pioneers. The JV girls will start the action at 4 o'clock, followed by the JV boys, the Varsity Girls, and finally the Varsity Boys. The games will not be broadcasted by Farm Cards Live due to COVID concerns, but we will send out a link as soon as we get one from Gentry. Now, we have a story about boys and girls basketball teams and how their seasons are going so far. Marcus is going to talk to Matteo Carbonell about the season, and Josh Brown will be talking with Mazzy Carlson about the girls' season so far, and their goals for the rest of their season. I have junior guard Matteo Carbonell. He plays a vital role in the boys' basketball team and 
They're nine and four right now, and a and three and one heading the conference, and they are looking to continue their great start in conference. So far this season, it's uh, it's been really good actually. You know, we came out with a good couple wins. You know, got a couple losses, but I feel like those losses made us learn from our mistakes and try to grow as a team and make sure we go all the way through the season running as many as we can. Now we have an interview with junior guard Mazzy Carlson. She plays a vital role in the in the girls basketball team. The team is 11 and 3 right now and 3 and 2 so far in conference. They're so looking to continue. <laughs> I think it's just how hard we work during practice and when we got quarantined over the summer and we had that long break where we couldn't come into the gym, everybody took the time out of their day to work hard. The league is always really hard and every opponent has their own strengths and weaknesses and I think if we just push hard against them and just work hard, we can do it. <laughs> in some football news, last week ended an era for Farmington football as head coach Mike Adams officially retired. Our own Katie Cater brings us up to speed with his retirement. 2020 has brought a lot of new experiences and a lot of disadvantages, including the COVID-19 pandemic. Now adding one more, as head coach of Farmington for the last 18 years, coach Mike Adams steps down for retirement. If one thing's certain, he impacted a lot of people during this time. It's all about uh, working with kids. Learn to adjust how to uh, treat uh, your players as individuals uh, and mold those individuals into a team. Adam's success at Farmington was not limited when he passed his success down to his athletes and students. You can't pick out just one highlight, I think. I think the thing I'm most proud of is uh, up to this point, I've got 24 of my former players are now coaching. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction knowing that the things I've I've taught will be continuing to be taught. Well, I've had a great group of kids here. Uh, you know, I, this is where I, both my sons played for me here. Uh, you know, there's different things I want to do. I, you know, I just want to spend some time mainly with my family. I've got five grandchildren that I hadn't spent a whole lot of time with, and I'm looking forward to do that. Uh, I think it's a good and bad thing. Um, obviously, we've had some good memories with Coach Adams. Thank you for all the things uh, that you've done for me. Uh, again, thank you for all the hard work the kids that I've coached uh, have put in. It comes from all of Farmington when we say thank you, Coach Adams. This is Katie Cater, and back to you guys in the news. Thanks, Katie. With the season cut short last year, Cardinal track members are pumped for this year's season. Also, first-year Cardinal coach Greg Pears is pumped up as well for this year's season. We will now have Lance discuss more. The COVID virus, in other words, shut off the track season last year and also things that have happened in the track program as new coach on the girls side coach pair i now discuss more with coach pair anything we get out there and work uh, especially early on we're just going to get out and stretch get the girls back into shape to run uh jump do the things they need to do and then from there i mean the, the time doesn't lie i mean so uh, everything in tracks measurable so we can always measure it and uh, you know the best will go to the meets and the best will compete represent farmers as well represent it with uh, integrity and great character. I expect them to compete as hard as they can compete every day. For most returning Cardinal track members, their season was cut short last year due to COVID concerns. And for the upcoming seniors, they really are going to be relying on this year's track season to possibly um, continue their track careers and or goals at the next level. Well, I've been Lance Williams in the Car Center. Back to you guys in sports. Thanks, Lance. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Early Word. Have a great weekend, Farmington. Remember, wear your masks.